Hi, my name is Patrick de Jardins, and in this video we will remove duplication from the previous code created in the gRPC TypeScript server as well as adding new fields to see how maintainable is the relationship between the gRPC server in TypeScript and the evolution of the proto file. Then we will introduce a new file watcher that will work for you in the background to always have your TypeScript file up to date without worrying or forgetting to run uh, the command. So we're going to open uh, the Visual Studio with the previous uh, code that we had for the first video. So the generation of TypeScripts from the protocol buffer schema is uh, very powerful, but it requires to map a field from uh, the persistent storage to the protocol buffer format. The original code had two methods with the same logic, one with a single entity and for the house, and another one for the list. Instead of repeating the logic, the best practice is to extract the mapping and create some utility functions. So we're gonna create um, a class in the mapping.ts file. So this is the first step, is to create uh, the mapping for a single entity. Then adding a generic function that will loop uh, the list uh, to generate uh, a list of mapped entity. So, for example, our domain uh, object uh, is the only a single one, the house. Uh, however, if your uh, domain has 50 objects, then you will have 50 mapping function. The reason is that there is no natural way to map from your database to the protocol buffer format. In our example, we're running a fake database, uh, which is a list of variables. But we can imagine a SQL query and mapping your data to the GPC uh, objects. So right now, I'm just copying the same code uh, that we had before into this function and I will uh, return the gRPC um, object. So it may seem, uh, seem uh, simple but this is going to increase your productivity in long term. First there's less repetition. It's easier to change since it's centralized in one place and also uh, unit testing mapping uh, does not intermingle with any gRPC function uh, in the server. So I'm using a class here uh, because with a complex mapping scenario with many uh, relationship, it's easier to uh, create a unit test by mocking just the function that the other function uh, is calling. However, I think a file with function can also be uh, fine uh, and, and do the trick if you prefer to avoid classes. So now in the server.ts, what I'm, I'm, I'm doing is uh, simply calling the mapping file and uh, we will actually add now the um, just a, a, a variable. This way we don't have to instantiate many times uh, the mapper class. Uh, this way, the mapping.ts is gonna be very cohesive, just having the mapping. Uh, it will uh, increase the coupling because we're having to import. Uh, however, it's gonna be way more uh, efficient. If you need to change the mapping, you know you need to go to the mapping. So now we're going to add a second mapper function, which will be for the collection of a house. So we, instead of uh, taking a single house, we will take an array of house and we will return another area as well. So what we're going to do is uh, using the map function. And we're calling this way. We don't need to have uh, the map function in the server or anywhere else. Uh, we just rely on having a clean uh, signature, which is going to be uh, houses. So uh, if we move uh, back to the server, we will uh, be able to modify the get houses and remove this map um, by using our function that we just created. Um, we're going to probably need uh, to cast here um, because of um, how uh, the mapping function is going to work. Uh, let's give it a try. So I'm going to convert the house here. So it's a constant. So I'm going to need to create an another function and uh, call the mapping, the, the new function we have, and the houses. And this is where I, yeah. So I'll, I'll need to cast. as object, yep. So, here we go. 
now we have two so I'm gonna just re need to rename there we go so with the mapping outside the server file let's evolve the proto file with an additional primitive type the type is an integer uh, and it's gonna be the number of bedroom uh, for the house so I go here and I'm gonna add it as the fifth field so once the field uh, added in the proto file we can generate all types script uh, definition so I'll let's use the gen.sh so if there's no exception um, so that's good however if we go back in the code we'll see some exception which is totally uh, normal um, that there's some complaint uh, about the number of uh, bedroom so once uh, it's all filled up we're gonna need to add uh, the values that's good but uh, as you can see this would be in the database usually so we wouldn't have to change these fields uh, in the server.ts it would be only in the mapping file uh, so here we just need to add the setter for the field so we can run, run um, bloom rpc after uh, we start the server so first of all we need to start it and then i'm gonna uh, open the, the Bloom uh, RPC software to try um, what we just did right here and then I'm gonna create a new query with the number one and we can see the number of room the bedroom is two so it is working so to make our life uh, easier we can uh, automate this generation uh, of TypeScript. So what we're gonna do here is um, going back in the package file and we're gonna add a, a command uh, from the previous video uh, to do and uh, what we need first is to add uh, node mon. So it is possible to use uh, npm install and save the uh, node mon. So it's gonna fetch the monitoring that will uh, check for the profile and when a change is detected we'll launch uh, gens.ts so we can create uh, in the script uh, a new entry for the monitoring which is going to take some parameter uh, and this command can be uh, run in the background so this is what we're going to do so we need to invoke um, node mon and then uh, we're going to uh, say to uh, watch the file house the proto and then execute what we want when the file is changing so if we go change the proto file so if we run the monitor now it's starting so from that point we can go change um, the proto file so let's go into house.proto right here and then let's remove uh, most of the field and then automatically in the console you can see that something has changed and if we go uh, check out the server file you can see that we're getting exception square feet does not exist anymore we can see many uh, exceptions and this is what we want we want the code to react if we're adding or removing field and know which one is uh, good or not so right now if we uh, peek into the house we can see there's only a, an id if we put it back and then save Right away, oh, the house underscore pb is regenerated with all the field. This is what we uh, what this is what we expected. So um, so to wrap up uh, in this video, uh, we have set the project in a position that we will uh, be more productive. And the next video of this series on automation types uh, that you're watching will introduce further primitive types and we will see that uh, using directly primitive might not be uh, what we really expect to be so uh, let's stay tuned and uh, we'll talk soon have a good day bye bye